Tonight's concert features the world-famous summit recording artist, Carolina Brass. We want to thank the Gardner-Webb University Distinguished Artist Series Music Department, the Alfred and Shirley Wampler Caudill Fund at Gardner-Webb University. <laughs> Three of our brass faculty play in the Carolina Brass. They're professors Tim Hudson on trumpet, Bob Campbell on horn, and Dave Wolfeck on trombone, and he teaches low brass, trombone, euphonium, and tuba. We'll be sending tonight's video to high schools along with educational materials. If any of you would like our GWU music faculty to hold Zoom masterclasses with your students on any instruments uh, or voice, just contact us. Special thanks to Tim Hudson for putting tonight's concert together. We'll be having more of these concerts in the future and hope you will tell others to join us. Please like our Gardner-Webb University Department of Music page on Facebook. Without further hesitation, let's welcome the world famous Carolina Brass. Uh, the first tune there, Carolina in the Morning, uh, was an arrangement that was uh, done for, for this group a number of years ago by a very dear friend of ours, Arthur Frackenpole. Not really a household name, um, but he is amongst musicians, especially brass players. Um, you'll hear a little bit more about Art uh, as we go on in the program. Um, re really dear friend of ours uh, and happened to be uh, my next door neighbor a number of years ago when I lived in New York. Um, this next tune we're going to play. Um, is one that I'm sure you'll know, Fam the Opera, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um, another arrangement done for this group by a man named Jack Gale, um, another one of our most prolific um, composers, arrangers um, for this medium. And Jack is on Broadway. If you have attended a Broadway show um, in your life in New York City, good chance you heard him playing trombone. Uh, because he spent his career in the pit, <laughs> uh, in the pits of New York, I like to say. 
um, good guy, a wonderful musician, um, and he's been on the faculty at the Manhattan School of Music for many years, um, on their composition faculty. Um, so he did this right for us as well, and some other things, which we'll talk about again later in the program. Now, before we go on any more, I'd like to take a moment to introduce the group. Thank you. very much. Uh, it's nice to be playing in front of a live audience and an audience live on Facebook as well. Uh, hopefully you can hear us and you can hear us talking. If you, if you can't hear us, just click that little frowny thing and, and we'll know what you mean. Uh, well, maybe we won't know what you mean. I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're practicing a little social distancing here. We're a little further apart than usual, but after uh, 23 years together, sometimes it's good to get a little distance between us. And uh, so, uh, yeah, our next piece, uh, Simple Gifts. It's by American composer uh, Aaron Copeland, maybe probably the most famous American composer. And that was sort of by design. Uh, Aaron Copeland understood that most American composers at the time had been trained by European composers, and they sort of had a European sound, and he wanted American composers to create an American sound in sort of the same way that 
French composers had a French sound. Russian composers had a Russian sound. You get the idea. And how he did that was he took uh, folk tunes and incorporated them into his music. And this next piece is a great example of that. Uh, it is called Simple Gifts, but it's actually part of a larger piece by Copeland called Appalachian Spring. And uh, this tune comes in at the end, and it's sort of variations on the shaker tune, Simple Gifts. And this is arranged by uh, Yari Villanueva, who was a uh, trumpet player. He's retired now, but uh, he was a trumpet player in the Air Force Band up in D.C. for quite some time. Uh, here we go, Simple Gifts.
Okay, our next piece is by uh, English composer William Boyce, and uh, it's voluntary in B-flat, two-movement work, slow and medium. Actually, uh, on the parts it has Italian words, largo and moderate, or moderato, but uh, I just thought since he's an English composer, I'd give you the English translations of the movements. Um, William Boyce writing back at the same time as Bach wrote composer, and actually, Bach, my understanding is, wasn't really like the big popular guy in Germany at the time. You know, he was, he was a great composer, but it wasn't until much later that it really became like, oh, he's the guy. Well, in England, Boyce was the guy. So if you were listening to your radio, had your top 40 station on at the time, you probably would have been hearing William Boyce. And uh, this might have been one of the pieces. Although this piece, uh, a lot of you may recognize it uh, from being played at weddings or something like that. William Boyce's uh, Voluntary in B flat.
Thank you. So the next piece um, we're going to play uh, is by a very, very famous uh, singer, composer, a bandoneonist from Argentina, Astor Piazzolla. So Astor Piazzolla was born in 1921, and through his entire life dedicated to the tango, he obviously had wonderful teachers like Carlos Gardel, and the typical, very old folk tango uh, style. So he is very famous because he introduced jazz chords in new uh, musical melody into the tango. So that's why uh, Astor Piazzolla's tango, even if it's a very simple name, is called the new tango. Uh, he add all these jazz sounds and very wonderful chords. It makes all these old pieces like um, Adios Nonino or uh, Oblivion, which is the piece we're about to play, much more interesting. We hope you like Oblivion. I'm just going to say um, momentarily here, as Bob mentioned earlier, um, this group, we've been together now for, for uh, nearly 25 years, 23 years. We, we got started in 1997. And, uh, and Bob, and Dave, and Matt, and I, we, we're the original founders of the group. Um, yes, Greta right Park. <laughs> and then when John moved to North Carolina, our percussionist, uh, a couple of years later, um, we, we thought, well, we got to have percussion. And Antonio, um, new guy. It's our new guy. Yeah. So he just joined the group last year, and it's so wonderful having him with us. Um, I have the honor of playing with him down in Charleston. He's principal of the Charleston Symphony, and, and uh, we'll, we'll tell you more about the group later. But uh, just wanted to to give Tony a little breather also <laughs> before he plays this this big solo, which features him, and he plays it so beautifully. Hope you enjoy Tony's playing and this piece of blue.
Tony will be signing autographs after the show. <laughs> I will do my best to enunciate through these layers of mask. Thank you very much for being here. Tony mentioned jazz chords being introduced into that piece. We're gonna go all the way to the birthplace of jazz, New Orleans, the one true American music, this wonderful gumbo that came from Western European harmony, Caribbean and West African rhythms, and all accumulated in New Orleans, came up the Mississippi River, and I would ask that we would dedicate this performance to our friends in the south part of the United States who are bracing for yet another hurricane. We wish them well and dedicate the St. Louis Blues to their good health.
thanks so much. Um, and as Bob said, it is so nice to be back on stage and be able to play for a live audience. And thank you for being here. Um, and for those listening, uh, either now live or in the future, because we'll have this up on YouTube and everything else, uh, thank you for listening. Hope you're enjoying the program as much as we are enjoying playing for you. Uh, this next piece, actually before I, before I announce this piece, um, I mentioned uh, the guys in the group earlier. Um, I'll go ahead and, and uh, talk about, so Bob Campbell, um, he lives in Winston-Salem, and uh, he's our horn professor here at Gardner-Webb. I've known Bob uh, since, I think, 1983. And uh, it's just a real pleasure and a blessing to work with this fella. What a great guy. Uh, Dave Wolfack trombone. I met Dave in high school um, a couple years back when we were in all state band together. Um, yeah, back in the nineteen back in the nineteen hundreds, right? Um, I don't know. It must have been nineteen seventy nine, I think, or maybe eighty. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, a couple years back, and. Dave is our, as Dr. Sparty said, is our low brass instructor here. And uh, he's the godfather to my children. And what a, another great guy. All these guys, these are some of my best friends in the world. Wonderful people. Uh, so it's great not only getting to work with these guys on stage, but to get to teach with them too. It's just, it's just fantastic. Um, well, John just, just walked off a minute ago because I'm, 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 he didn't do very well. He didn't do this right now. Right. Um, yeah, we don't use percussion for every piece. Um, John, um, I met John back in, gosh, um, I think 1990. We were teaching at a music festival in Maine together. And, uh, you know, he wound up moving to North Carolina, uh, I believe in 99 or so. And uh, has been playing with us ever since. Great having John on board, um, another wonderful guy. And, uh, and then Matt Ransom, our tuba player. Who we go back to what well, maybe 85, I believe. We met in 1985. And uh, Matt at one point was principal tuba in Winston and Greensboro. Still both orchestras? Yes. Yeah, so he's still in both those oh. orchestras. And uh, oh, I'm not supposed to say anything. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and and Matt and Dave and, and Bob and I are the are the original founding members of this group. And it's to be honest, it's quite unusual to to have a group. Uh, with that kind of longevity with the same players because not only do you have to have good players, but even more importantly is the chemistry and getting along. Um, and that goes, you know, I, I tell that to my students here all the time, you know, we have to, to work together in a positive way and, and build relationships and teamwork and not only just musicality, but, but there are many other factors involved. And uh, so these guys uh, are, are just wonderful to work with. Uh, Tony on the other hand. And to, yeah, Tony on the other hand. Tony's a different story. <laughs> different animal here. Um, so we met just a few years back. Um, I don't know, maybe five, six years, seven years ago. Just, just a few years back. We wound up being on a, on a gig together that we were both hired to do. And we, we had heard of each other, I believe, um, but had not had the opportunity to meet. Um, and for the past three years or so, I think three years I've been, uh, fortunate enough to work with, the gent with this gentleman um, in Charleston. Um, I play second trumpet there, and Tony's the principal trumpet player in Charleston Symphony. And he's been on campus a few times. I have him here as often as I can to work with my students and uh, uh, getting master classes and so forth. I think he's been here just about every year recently. Um, just a wonderful guy. Uh, as you know, he's from Spain. You heard him earlier. Um, and it's just great um, being able to, having lived in Mexico a number of years ago, to uh, practice my rusty Spanish with, with Tony. It gives me an opportunity to do that sometimes. So what a blessing to enjoy to, to have Tony with us um, as, as, our, as our newest member of the group. So this next tune, gosh, I've talked so much, uh, but written by Vivaldi originally, Concerto D, written by Vivaldi. Um, and then it was taken by Bach. Now we're talking about the Baroque era. So the Baroque era was roughly 1580 to 1750. Well, I guess you could say uh, 1600 to 1750. Um, well, Johann Sebastian Bach was born in 1685 and died in 1750. Now we consider him being, you know, I guess arguably the greatest Baroque composer of all time. Well, he took, you know, this incredible Italian Baroque composer, Vivaldi, he took his work and made it his own. 
And then, um, what, a couple hundred years later, <laughs> a former member of Carolina Brass, Steve Doobie, uh, a former trumpet player who's a wonderful uh, person, lives over in Basel, Switzerland now. Um, I got to see him just a few years back when I was touring uh, Europe. Um, he did this arrangement for us um, back when he was still in the group, and uh, we loved playing it. It uh, kind of features the, the piccolo trumpets a little bit, so we'll be playing the, the smaller instruments here uh, called piccolo trumpets, and uh, which are, are used quite frequently in Baroque music. If you heard Handel's Messiah, for instance, that's often played, uh, well, always played on the piccolo trumpet, um, and many works of Johann Sebastian Bach, like the Brandenburg and so forth. So, hope you enjoy this next tune. And we affectionately call it the Vivaldi Bach Doobie. <laughs> so enjoy Concerto in D. Our next piece is by Johann Sebastian Bach. Uh, you've probably heard of him recently. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, he, uh, he was, yes, very talented. He didn't have to just steal music from Vivaldi. He could write his own stuff. And this next is one of his own. Uh, this was actually written originally for an Easter cantata. It was a tenor and bass aria uh, with orchestra. Um, and it has been arranged by uh, a, uh, a trumpet player named Harry Herforth. Yeah, Harry Herforth. And Harry Herforth was actually, uh, he was a trumpet player in the Boston Symphony and the Cleveland Orchestra. And uh, no longer with us, but this is a fantastic arrangement. And uh, all these arrangements by trumpet players, you know, and uh, there's a reason for that. When you're a trumpet player and you arrange something, you can give yourself all the best parts <laughs> and you can write in a lot of rests for yourself. So, you know, it's, it's a good angle to go on. Also, Harry Herforth must have had uh, either a really close friend or a terrible enemy who played tuba because this piece has got a lot of work for the tuba. 
<laughs> so, and I've heard Matt play this before and it always goes pretty well. So I'm expecting it to go well again tonight. And this is, Thanks. yeah, yeah, no, no pressure, Matt. Uh, my spirit be jo joyful. Here we go. We all have a little bit of work in this, I guess. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna play a piece by uh, Stanley Hoffman, who 
uh, was one of the editors for Shermer Publishing Company, how we got this piece, it's uh, Fanfare, Tango, and Fugetta on Hebrew themes. Um, we had played a concert uh, maybe 15 years ago or so with the uh, Chapel Hill Community Chorus, and they had commissioned all kinds of uh, works. It was their either 50th or 75th big uh, anniversary season. So they commissioned lots of works for uh, choir and brass for, you know, for our quintet with that. And um, then when they were trying to get these pieces published, they sent them to Shermer to see. And um, so then Stanley Hoffman contacted Tim, said, hey, would it be okay for us to use these recordings uh, with the pieces? Um, so it felt good about the way we'd played them. So that's nice, especially for uh, premiering the pieces. And uh, Tim just had said, well, uh, do you have any brass pieces that you've, after you found out uh, he was a composer? Also, what, you both went to New England Conservatory at different times, but, you know, so different connections. And um, we were talking in the business, uh, music business class, it's more about just relationships and some of the things, uh, you know, different people and how those things come about. And so uh, Stan said, well, I don't have anything, but uh, I'd love to write you something. And he wrote this piece for it, for us, and uh, it's one of my favorite pieces, just a really beautiful piece. Uh, the fanfare, tango, and fugetta. The fanfare is the soul of every living being shall bless your name. And then the tango is based on when Israel went forth from Egypt. And the fugetta is how goodly are your tents, O Jacob. And then at the end, the fanfare comes back to close out the piece. Here we go.
the next piece we're going to play, uh, uh, it's, um, it's by probably also one of the most famous American composers and conductors, uh, Leonard Bernstein. I'm sure we all have performed sometime uh, one of his works. Uh, this is probably, I'm not going to say the most famous because he has many famous works, but uh, West Side Story, based on the musical drama uh, in 1961, I think? Not really. No, maybe. Yeah. Um, yes. Great. <laughs> the Carolina Brassett. Good support. Thank you. Uh, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is really, uh, this is a wonderful piece arranged also by Jack Gale, uh, which I'm sure they have a big relationship with Carolina Brass. As a matter of fact, these uh, selections have become uh, pretty much standard on the Brass Quintet repertoire. Uh, and these pieces, uh, Jack Gale composed them for another uh, famous uh, Brass Quintet, the Empire Brass and Carolina Brass. Some of the movements are actually exclusively for Brass. So, uh, hope you enjoy tonight and just <laughs>
All right, thank you so much. We've got another tune here. This last piece um, is an arrangement done actually by uh, or for the Canadian Brass. Um, and that was one of the first groups that most all of us heard play, um, similar to what we have here, uh, two trumpets, horn, trauma, tuba. Um, they're, they're one of the earlier pioneers uh, with New York Brass, of course, Empire Brass, um, for this uh, type of, of, of chamber music. Um, so this arrangement, it, it's, it's really a fun arrangement. What we've done is we, basically we're telling the story of someone has passed away, uh, someone's loved one, fa family member, friend, and <clears throat> at the beginning, there's the slow march to the graveside. Okay, so it's a New Orleans style funeral march. So we have the slow march to the gravesite. Once we get there, there's an amen, and then there's a great celebration because their loved one has gone on to heaven. So we hope you enjoy this really fun arrangement of just a closer walk. Thank you. 
Let's play one more quick one for you here. Uh, we love this tune. It's another arrangement by Jack Gale, who did the West Side Story. It's a Nightingale sing in Barclay Square. And I just want to thank um, Dr. Cole and Dr. Sparty and Dr. Downs, our pre president here, and Gardner Webb for being um, such incredible hosts. Um, it's just an amazing place to work and to be and to study, to learn. Um, and, and it's just a joy for us to be here on the stage and uh, working with these students and playing for you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, for those at home uh, who, can't, who were na not able to be here, uh, we greatly appreciate it and hope to see you again in the future. Here we are at Nightingale Sing, Barclay Square.